back to Grand Adventure. I'm your host, Mark Guido, and we are in Twin Falls, Idaho. Behind me is where the city gets its name, Shoshone Falls, on the Snake River. We're on a very special Grand Adventure this week. We're actually taking a ski trip through the Snake River Valley of Southern Idaho to three ski areas that you've probably never even heard of, including one day cat skiing. So stick around on this episode of Grand Adventure. The ferocious flow over Shoshone Falls and the nearby Perrine Bridge spanning the Snake River Canyon are two of the most popular visitor attractions in Twin Falls, Idaho and the surrounding Magic Valley. Sometimes called the Niagara of the West, Shoshone Falls is 212 feet high, 45 feet higher than Niagara Falls, and flows over a rim nearly a thousand feet wide. Four hundred and eighty-six feet above the Snake River, the four-lane Perrine Bridge connecting Twin Falls with nearby I-84 is the eighth tallest bridge in the United States. Just east of the bridge lies the dirt ramp used by Evo Knievel when he unsuccessfully attempted to jump over the Snake River Canyon in September 1974, leaving Twin Falls with only a broken nose. The Perrine Bridge may be the only man-made structure in the U.S. where base jumping is allowed year-round without a permit. We enjoyed a scrumptious meal of local Idaho trout at Elevation 486 before settling down for the night at the Hilton Garden Inn in Twin Falls, then driving in the morning for 80 miles to Soldier Mountain Ski Area in Fairfield, Idaho. All right. My name is Matt McFerrin. My wife Diane and I are owners and operators of Soldier Mountain Ski Area. This is uh, something that we ran across like everyone else on Facebook, and we ended up being the lucky ones. So. It's been a lot of fun. This year is pretty trying with our snow conditions, but we had originally just taken a weekend trip to go over to Spout Springs to look around. Um, the ski resort was for sale there, and I always liked the idea. And then it wasn't but two months later, there was a post on Facebook with Ski Area in Idaho for sale, and it's something that we had uh, looked into before. Not this resort, but we knew of it. And uh, yeah, we put our name in the hat. They ended up getting, I think, 2,200 requests for information in the first 72 hours. And uh, we lucked out. Matt mentioned trying snow conditions, which have afflicted nearly the entire western U.S. this winter. Soldier Mountain is only in its second year with Matt and Diane at the helm, and you couldn't help but feel their pain as the lift serve ski area has only been able to operate a handful of days thus far this season. When we embarked upon this trip, we knew we wouldn't be skiing southern Idaho in ideal or even normal conditions. No matter though, for the potential at each of these three ski areas under normal conditions was obvious. At Soldier Mountain, the snowcat ski terrain sits some 2,000 feet of elevation above the ski area on more snowshore summits.
enough snow to run their lifts, Matt and Diane opened Soldier Mountain's doors just for us. We loaded Soldier's 12-passenger snowcat, along with a handful of guides, and headed for the deeper snowpack in higher terrain. An all-day guided snowcat experience at Soldier Mountain will set you back a very reasonable $235 plus booking fee. And a high country yurt is available for overnight accommodation. 12, if you do a full day of cat skiing back to back, you can use the yurt for free. Oh. I think it's free. For mm -hmm. free? Wow. Um, <laughs> We're holding you to it at least. Yeah. <laughs> Soldier Mountain's yurt is the only lodging space available for many miles in any direction in Idaho's sparsely populated Camas County. In fact, the tiny country store in Fairfield is the only grocery in the entire county. We always give a good safety talk right here. It's, we are in avalanche terrain. We're not gonna put anybody in anything that's going to bury you. We, we're up here all the time digging snow pits. But I just feel it's very important that everybody knows where their avalanche gear is and have has an awareness level of that. If you guys want to ski it, great. If you don't, great. We'll, we'll give you guys the opportunity to do a ski those one at a time. <laughs> if you get knocked over, um, lose your poles. Try and keep your skis off. We don't have any snowboarders today, it doesn't look like. Um, try, and, try and keep your skis off. And then you're just, just like in white water, you're just doing the backstroke, trying to stay up on it and ride this thing out, bouncing off of trees and rocks, trying to, trying to stay on top. Website, social media, advertising, that sort of thing. I uh, 
work with Ski Patrol, Grooming Department. Um, you know, we do avalanche mitigation with bombs. I get to have an ATF explosives license. Okay. And, uh, All kinds of cool yeah, things. Yeah, I do lift maintenance in the summers. Um, yeah, there's, there's a lot going on. It's, it's, every day's a little different. As there are no hotels in all of Camas County, we stayed at Elk Creek Ranch, the private home of Lori Guerin and her husband Daryl. Lori cooked a tasty pasta dinner for us on Tuesday night as we all gathered around the cozy kitchen table for spirited conversation and an amazing breakfast including Vermont maple syrup before our pre-dawn departure on Wednesday morning. Thank you Lori and Daryl for your warm hospitality. So this morning we left Fairfield before dawn and drove about two and a half hours to Pomerel Ski Area, a little bit east of Twin Falls. This is a family oriented resort of about 900 vertical feet. It's been owned by the same family for three generations now since the mid 1970s. They have some of the cheapest lift ticket prices you'll ever see and I'd love to show you around a little bit here at Pomerel today. Really, when was the last time you saw a $45 full price lift ticket? It would be a huge understatement to say that we found plenty of elbow room at Pomerel. Pomerel is all about family, from the gentle pitch of their groomers to their throwback base lodge complete with a hot fire to warm up around. Even Pomerel's lunch menu is budget friendly, including hearty burgers from the grill outside, complete with a house-made pepper and onion salsa topping. Barry Whiting, uh, my role here is uh, the snow sports school director, a uh, job I love. I must, I've been here for uh, teaching skiing here for 42 years and I think I've had the ski school right close to 35 years, so. <laughs> I think you love teaching skiing a lot more than you like speaking on camera. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what makes Pomerel unique? Uh, number one, our terrain. And number one along with it, uh, our snow conditions, the groomers, those guys are great. They do a great job keeping this mountain groomed for people. 
uh, our ski school, very good ski school for the size of this area. Uh, we're very, very fortunate to have the good crew we do. What, uh, what is it about the terrain? You mentioned the terrain. What is it? The terrain, it's, it's uh, mostly beginner intermediate. You know, we have a few spots that are, will test anyone, but uh, truthfully is what we do is we teach people to ski here and hope to give them the platform to have a lifelong love for the mountains and skiing and snowboarding. Uh, tell me about your beginner packages here. Uh, best in the West. Uh, the price is phenomenal. I mean, I think a lot of kids can come up here for 25 bucks and have a lesson and uh, their lift ticket, the whole works. I don't think you can find that price many so places. Let's, lift what is, what, let's close with, with your enticement to ski Pomerel. What would you tell people? Uh, snow conditions for one. Look at this winter. Yeah, and it's skiing pretty well today. Oh, and it was great today. snow today, yeah. And uh, uh, the overall atmosphere, it's a family area, and it's geared toward kids and families. And uh, our terrain is, I, I call it skier and border friendly. Right next to one another, just a few miles south of Pomerel, are situated Castle Rock State Park and City of Rocks National Preserve. After leaving Pomerel, I detoured to see the two en route to our night's lodging in Lava Hot Springs. Both are extremely popular rock climbing destinations and are a sight to behold even for simple sightseeing. City of Rock sits right on the historic route of the Argon Trail, and on Camp Rock and surrounding features you can find the inscriptions of many who traveled through the area en route to the west coast 150 years ago. But travelers on the Oregon Trail aren't the only ones who get to camp in City of Rocks. There are a number of campsites operated by the Park Service that are accessible by RV. As enthralling as Castle Rocks and City of Rocks can be, I risked lingering too long 
for I still had two and a half hours of windshield time ahead of me to reach Lava Hot Springs before nightfall. Lava Hot Springs is a small historic resort community, population 407, situated on the banks of the Portneuf River at 5,000 feet of elevation, just south of Pocatello, Idaho. It's known for its namesake hot springs pools and a turbulent inner tube run on the Portneuf right through part of the town. Visitors will find numerous hotels, both historic and modern, most with hot springs pools of their own. The town's public geothermic soaking pools on East Main Street are open year-round late into the evening. Temperatures range from 102 to 112 degrees, depending on the pool. Heated sidewalks and dressing room floors keep toes toasty even during the winter months. On the other side of town, kids will love the outdoor Olympic pool complex complete with diving platforms and water slides that are open during the summer months. My stay was booked at Aura Soma Lava, where they placed me in an intimate pre-manufactured tiny home right in the center of town. Yeah, somehow on this trip I'm still staying in an RV. Each of the five tiny houses sports its own motif. Mine was Italy. The spacious home featured a futon in the living room, a full kitchen complete with pots, pans, and cooking utensils, a full bath, and a queen-size bed in the rear of the structure. I also toured the Riverside Hot Springs Inn and Spa where I got to see the apartment occupied by Teddy Roosevelt during his stay in Lava Hot Springs. Look at this. Building was completed in 1917. It's a cozy little bar. This is nice. Hey, wait a minute. Dude, the photographer's not supposed to be taking pictures while I'm filming. <laughs> Portneuf Grill occupies the bottom floor of the Riverside Hot Springs Inn, and I savored a dinner of bison before retiring for the night, followed by a hearty breakfast the next morning at the Chuck Wagon Restaurant, fueled for another ski day ahead. It's only about a 15-minute drive from Lava Hot Springs to Pebble Creek Ski Area, featuring 2,200 vertical feet of terrain that will challenge any skier or rider. Like virtually all ski areas across the west this winter, Pebble Creek has been suffering this season from low snowfall. But even with a mere 14 inches of snowpack at the base and 30 on top, we found the cover to be exceptional on the open terrain. Pebble Creek is in the midst of changing ownership. After 30 years at the helm, owner and general manager Mary Reichman has sold the resort to YouTube celebrity Shea Butler. Butler's brother Mike is assuming GM duties as Mary readies to finally depart this March. At Pebble Creek, we found a surprising diversity of terrain from steep old growth forests to intermediate groomers cascading from the summit and perfect learning terrain at the base. The 
This is like having your own private ski area. There's nobody here. We also found a local cast of characters passionate about their ski area and anxious to keep their secret intact. A full price lift ticket costs only $47, and Pebble Creek is a worthy stop if traveling between, say, Salt Lake City and Jackson, Wyoming. The fall line is relentless, top to bottom. side country to the north of the ski area that they would like me to not tell you about is an easy skin or traverse out of the ski area. There's an equal amount on the other end, the south end of the ski area. So Aaron, what are your uh, what are your impressions of Pebble Creek? The terrain's rad. Um, I mean, as much fun as we're having with zero snow, I can only imagine what it's like with the normal snowpack. And this is this is like BC skiing terrain here. It's pretty awesome to have this big rock here. It's pretty relentlessly steep, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, you don't, like you were saying before, you don't find a lot of ski areas like this where you don't have any flats uh, to have a sustained fall line at 2200 feet is pretty remarkable. Taking our lunch at 1 p.m. on a Thursday, our group constituted the only people inside Pebble Creek's base lodge. Hey guys, it's hard, kind of hard to get a table here today. Lunch food at Pebble Creek is homemade, tasty, and cheap. We are really famous for our french fries. In fact, I have a really funny story about that. Um, we cut our french fries fresh every day. Uh, they come from local farmers. They're brought up in boxes for the, uh, you know, with local potatoes. We get a delivery every week. Um, and one year, our food rep was telling us that I could really cut my labor costs if we went to a frozen product. So I go to the food show and I'm looking around and trying all the different french fries from the different people. And I go to this one booth that was actually the Simplot's booth, which is Idaho potatoes, and um, was trying the fries and the woman asked me, oh, where are you from? And I told her Pebble Creek and she just looked at me and said, oh, no, we're not selling you anything. She said, you never change those fries. They're just too special. We're all incredibly impressed by Pebble Creek, and I'm certain that I'll be back in a normal snow year to experience all that this mountain has to offer. We finished our visit through southern Idaho with an overnight at the Fairfield Inn by Marriott in the nearby railroad town of Pocatello, along with a savory Mexican dinner at the city's famed El Heredero restaurant. We'd like to thank Idaho Tourism and their partners named in the video description below as well as, of course, Soldier Mountain, Pomeral, and Pebble Creek ski areas for making this trip possible. We'd love to count you among our Grand Adventurers, so if you haven't yet done so, please subscribe to Grand Adventure right here on the screen. Give us a thumbs up if you like this video, and throw us any questions or comments in the comment section below. So until next time, remember, life is nothing but a Grand Adventure. We'll see you soon.